Right behind me is a 90 foot bluff which marks the start of the cave. Right below it is a concrete structure we put in place to protect us from any fallen rock or debris. And as soon as we get into that concrete structure, you are going to notice the temperature change. It is 47 degrees year round here inside of the cave, and it is probably 72 outside right now. Yeah. I can't wait to look at the cave, that mess. Yeah. I'm just pointing them out. There's another one. There's one. And there's a lot of nests. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, mess. Spooky. Oh man, I'm gonna hit the drop when it drips. Okay. Smells like a cave. Ooh, yes, it is it cold. Ooh, spooky. Gosh, it's cold. Should have brought a coat. Alright, guys, so I do ask now for claustrophobic. Please tell me. This first part and some of the other parts of the cave do get quite low. If you are claustrophobic, you can't turn the boat around and you do get a full refund. However, in there, I cannot turn the boat around. So if you are claustrophobic, just let me know. Uh, I'm good. We're good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. All right, so just a little history on the cave. It first started out as a six inch hole at the base of the bluff. Locals used to call that hole spooky hole because whenever they passed by it, they'd hear creepy noises coming from within. However, it was just the water dripping over the fallen rock. So a curious man by the name of Gerald Milky approached the original landowners and asked if he could dynamite about 60 feet back behind me. He was granted permission in 1953, so he excavated the cave for about two years, and on Labor Day of 1955, he opened this cave up for cave tours. So this Labor Day, we have been open for 63 years. Mm, nice. All right, so this part of the cave is fairly low. Any part throughout the tour that is low, I do ask you, please lean towards me. Not lean towards the sides of the back of the boat. This can cause the weight to shift, and I don't think you want to go swimming in 42 degree water. <laughs> and also through this part, please keep your hands off the sides of the boat. Throughout the rest, just be mindful of where you set your hands. I don't think anyone wants to lose any fingers today. Alright. Okay, watch your head. What do you tell us? Yeah, no. I don't even have to duck. I could have to push up more. Hmm. Aren't you lucky? Yes. Yes, I am. No, I don't think that's just it. This is neat. Do you have to put the lights down here? Yeah. I wouldn't would want the job of changing the light bulbs. <laughs> All right, guys, coming up here past this green light. That green light is going to show the first cross space girl Milky used to explore the cave. Ooh. There will also be another one on our left here. However, it does dead end about 15 feet. It wasn't of much use. And past this white light here, we are going to go through what we call Lover's Lane. The walls do taper in quite a bit. If you guys get too close to either side of the wall, you guys can't push off. However, please do not stop the boat. Oh. Do you watch out? Yeah, I know. Do you watch out? Almost took out my shoulder. That's a little hard to get through this part. Don't worry, guys. Don't be slashed over this long. We are going to be entering into the largest room here inside the cave. This is awesome. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. That's big. This is the largest room inside the cave. About 45 feet tall and 110 feet long. This is actually the only room inside the cave made entirely out of mud and rock. When Girl Milky was oh. first exploring the cave, all the mud and rock went up these electrical wires you guys can see here with an additional six inches of water on top. So he was forced to crawl under here. This wall tour right here, you guys can touch it if you would like. It is made out of Galena limestone. You will see quite a bit of Galena limestone throughout the cave. Galena limestone is made when dead sea creatures compress over time. If you guys have any questions throughout the tour, just feel free to blurt them out. I'll answer them as best I can. Mm -hmm. You don't have to raise your hand or anything.
a little bit of stalactites. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's okay.
A stalactite is foreign and mineral seep down through the rock. You guys can kind of see it up here. I am touching these stalactites up here because they are now dead. You see here, this is what a baby stalactite looks like. This one here is about 200 years old or so now. However, once the water seeps down through this rock, eventually over time, these little things will jut out of the rock. And then about a thousand or more or so years, these large ones here are formed. Take a look right back here at this weird looking formation. This one here is called the Pippi or Harry stalactite. You will get a better look if we're coming back out of the cave. How this stalactite gets its name because legend has it. If one drop of water were to land on your head, you would go bald within one week. I have been going to the great Remember to wash your heads. Not me. Please do not touch the formation and cover your hair. Sometimes we have frogs and salamanders. We don't typically have snakes. That is just once in a few, uh, it takes a long time for snakes to actually get in here. They don't typically fall down, but through the chimneys they do. However, sometimes we do have snakes, or not snakes, frogs and salamanders down here. Uh, we don't have any fish. Once we raise the dam, all the water drains out. It goes down to about three to six inches of water. We don't want to keep any fish through here and then kill them off at the end of the year. Yeah. This water doesn't freeze, so that wouldn't be a problem to have in here. But I don't know about you, but when I'm trying to give a tour, I don't want people fishing above me and then I end up getting hooked or something. That would be very, very bad. Yeah. Alright guys, we are coming up to the largest formation we have here inside the cave. It is called the frozen waterfall. That is. That's awesome. The frozen waterfall is made entirely out of columns. Now the column is formed when basically these stalagmites down here and the stalactites above our head grow together. Eventually over time, these columns are formed. And you want to take a guess of how far underground we are? Um, 200 feet? A little less, about 150. Dang. Okay. We went from about 60 feet at the beginning of the cave to about 90 feet under the lifeline to about 150 feet. Right? Wow. Why the drastic change? <laughs> All right, so I am going to move this up just a little bit. You guys can turn around and look at this wall here. The black mineral that's sitting on it is called chert. Okay, in the middle. <laughs> on a hardness level of 1 to 10, with the diamond actually being a 10, chert averages out at about a 7. To give you guys an example of how strong chert is, Native Americans would actually use this to make their arrowheads. I have also learned that in Europe they use it to start fires. So if you're ever stranded and you have some turd on hand, by chance you can start fire. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you're stranded. <training>, yeah. <laughs> you guys can look right above us, our heads here. These long, slender stalactites are called soda straw stalactites. They get their name because they are hollowed out in the center here. So they're not like they're not like regular stalactites. They're hollowed out. So if one were to break off, you would actually be able to sip liquids through it. I really don't recommend as they're made out of minerals, so I mean they're gonna be quite salty. <laughs> Alright, so the next part of the community tour we are to go through, we like to call Formation Alley. If you look up on the ceiling here, you can see hundreds of formations growing to this part of the cave. There's a lot of water flow to this part of the cave. It's not that deep though, this part, but there is a lot of waterfall on the top of the cave. So that's why you see so many stalactites up on the ceiling here. And if you guys like really like bats. Oh, yeah. bats. <laughs> Yay. Well, you guys should actually come back in around late August, September time and come get a cave tour. Our bats actually do hang up from right here. Awesome. Wow. We still give our cave tours. They don't bother us. You can see my thumbs are only about as big as my thumb. They're about two inches long with a wingspan of six inches. They're called pedestal bats in case you're wondering. They are very little, they don't bother anything. They just come in here to hibernate, pretty much just use this for our food and then leave. <laughs> that is cool. This 
last room we're going to be in, we like to call it our turnaround room. Past this point here, this cave is no longer natural. Your old monkey did dynamite back here. Originally, their cave tours only went to the frozen waterfall and they turned around. How they turned around there, I'm not really sure. But now we have this lovely room, so crazy blinking light here. <laughs> Alright, so once I get up to these bars here, I am going to demonstrate the natural darkness. So if you do have your phone on, I do ask if you could please turn it off for just one second. There's a back there. We do have a room called the sun room. I know some of you have noticed how clear the water is. I will shine my light on both sides of the boat so you guys can see again. Crystal. The water is very clear. Our cave is actually naturally spring fed. Mm. So that room back there, we like to call it our sump room. That's basically where all the water pulls up and it recycles back through the cave. 100% natural, we have no pumps helping it. However, the tour guides, we do have to go back there at the end of the season. We did have a few boulders drop down, so we just want to make sure it's not blocking any water flow. But past this blue light here, which is why we can't go back any farther, the water depth lowers down to about eight inches or so. Our boats do need 14 inches of water to maneuver, so we can't go back there on boat. But we would be able to walk back there on foot. But past that green light there, if you guys can see my hand, the walls taper into about this wide. So it's very close together. And then once you actually get back there, almost to the sump room, we have two or two or three large boulders blocking the way. So it's like one here, there's one at the bottom, and one here. So you actually have to crawl through a space about this wide. Oh, wow. And then finally it opens up to about six feet deep of water. Dark room, there's no lights. It's very scary. <laughs> very, very cold water. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm going to turn around the boat. Back row, you guys are going to go under that ledge there. Please do not stop the boat. I know you guys are going to get close to the wall, but you shouldn't be under there too long. touch it if you want to, if you don't want to, that's okay But if you look on the lifeline, when I shine my light on it and you're really close to it, you can sometimes see some of like the little seashell fossils. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we haven't really found too many fossils inside of here. Um, pretty much Iowa was once underwater about 750,000 years or so. So basically all you're going to find in here is pretty much sea creatures. Alright, we are going back by the frozen waterfall, so you guys didn't get a good enough look now. There's a big cat on it, but there's the water pump back over here. Look how clear it is. You guys have any questions for me? Mm -hmm. How long have you been giving cave tours? So technically, I have only given cave tours for about a year, but I do have a seasonal site up here, so I camp here a lot. So I do help out quite a bit for them. I don't normally just give cave tours here. We clean and we help with like reservations and cabins and stuff. All right, so we are going back under this, but I will show you two more formations we have here. Back where you guys are probably going to swing under there, but I do recommend pulling yourself out now. It does get quite muddy the farther down you get. And I don't think you guys are going to be full of mud today. <laughs> it is a little hard to keep the boat just staying there, sways around. Sure. You guys can take a look right up here at this white formation. This here is called our Jostra Formation. 
It gets its name because it kind of resembles a row of teeth. It is made out of white mineral calcite, so as all of these formations are getting larger, this one here is actually eroding away quite quickly. When I first started like actually giving cave tours, we took a picture of it, just to see how fast it kind of erodes away. It eroded away about this much, and I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but you realize it takes an inch every 100 years for these things to grow. It is quite a drastic change. So these formations back here, these are called our ribbon strip formations. They are kind of the popular ones. We also like to call these formations our bacon strip formations. Can I shine my light behind? Bacon. It kind of resembles bacon. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I don't recommend biting it though. If you're going to end up looking like this. <laughs> Here's one last look at that hippie or hairy stalactite. So as we go under the gray hair, remember to cover your hair and do not touch the formation. So what brings you guys here today? You guys camp in here? Are you just passing by? Just passing by. Where are you guys from? Kansas. 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 Yeah. <laughs> All the way up here? Yeah. Yep. Here, here, my my hands are going to go Oh. Oh, okay. Are you guys camping up here then? Are you guys camping nearby? Well, yeah, my RV will start here. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> we got to go down. all the way coming up here from Kansas. With We're heading to Minnesota. What for? Cam. Oh, okay. So do they rent cabins here? We have campsites, we have cabins, we have tent sites as well. We have the whole nine yards here. We got a cave, we got a campground. I say we need to build a restaurant and we got the whole thing. Yeah. A lot of people say they want like a snack bar in here. Sometimes we're in here for quite some time. Yeah. We can fit like six to seven boats here at a time. So when you see me turning on and off lights, we have a main switch, so I wouldn't have to really turn off all the lights. But when another boat's in here, that's how we basically know what part of the cave they're in. We turn on and off the lights, so that tells you how to wait or not. So it's why you think you both are going to be passing each other? Um, so we have points like right up here at the passing point. Right here, we can't pass, like it's a little dangerous. But there are parts where we have not yes. stuck before because it gets crazy. We can't really see that one. one. Okay, so that's okay, that's getting stuck. It's a mess. Did you see that? I did. Dude, we can kind of build that. Yeah. All right, backside, you guys are going to swing and hit the wall here. This corner is a little hard to turn. Why is that not chewing? It is. What's that sign? I'll uh, be aware of attack out here. Ah. Attack out here. We got three alligators in every game. Basically, our men just do it. Oh, yeah. A little sketchy, but. 
just gotta make you a little nervous when you're touching the lights. Oh yeah. Metal boat, water. All right, guys. So who noticed that wood door the first time we came in this room? I thought it was metal though. <laughs> Well, actually, that wood door is where Grilled Milky lowered a small John Deere tractor and wagon here inside this room. If you don't believe me, we do have original pictures inside of our store you guys can look at. He originally wanted to start his cave tours down here. However, only three out of these seven boats would actually fit down here. So he did have to start them where he started them today. But he did want to make a little extra money off those doors, so he did keep it open for about two or three years, I'd say, as an observation deck for claustrophobic people. Oh, yeah. But if you look right next to it, you can kind of see a bunch of dead stalactites up there. Sunlight is actually very dangerous to our cave. He was forced to close those doors. I'd say they're buried anywhere now to about 40 to 50 feet underground. If you know anything about wood, it rots away. <laughs> I don't want to be in the cave when that rots away. <laughs> All right, so we are going back under the low part again here, guys. Shortly, we are going to be going through Lover's Lane again. Remember, lean towards the center of the boat and do not stop the boat. What's back there? Back there? Yeah. That's the, where his original crawl space emptied out. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then he dynamited again and then emptied out to over there. That's another crawl space. Mm -hmm. So right here, that's the, the green light that's up there. It empties there. So then basically I had to dynamite again and then it made another hole which emptied out there. Yeah. As you guys can tell, he was a very small man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alright guys, so as we actually exit the cave today, you are gonna notice two things. There will be quite a bit of a temperature change. It is gonna be very warm outside. It is only 47 in here and about 72 outside. If you do have glasses on, they will fog up quite a bit. We're also going to notice a change of smell. We have no plant life growing here inside the cave. And as you guys do know, there's a lot growing outside. So you are going to notice a more nature smell. And hopefully the fields aren't doing any field work because I don't want a strong smell of manure. Yeah. <laughs> as we do actually exit the cave, guys, just raise your head slowly. Speaking from experience here, there are some sharp rocks sticking outside. Trust me, you don't want to smack your head on those. Well, congratulations, guys. We barely survived Spook Cave today. Is that cool? There you go. Easy, Bash. Is that fun? Yeah. All right, guys. So, like I mentioned, inside of our cave, it is naturally spring fed which means all the water that drains out this way does go past that dam there into a trust stream called Bloody Run. Now Bloody Run got its name because there was a nearby military fort, so all the soldiers, hunters, and fishermen from this area would actually wash all their hides and knives, sometimes throwing in buckets of blood and guts in the water, giving it quite a bit of a bloody red tint. Very gross, if you ask yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. If you are looking for a good trout stream or any fishing stream, this bloody run closer to Marquette is actually very good for Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, guys. Do you guys have any last questions before I dock the boat? Well, I like the Alright, right, guys. So, as I actually dock the boat, I am going to hook up this front cord and the back cord. Please do not jump out of the boat as back row you guys are going to the outside. Okay. Yep. Ah, oh, dang it. I was hoping you'd slip. Alright, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm not. I walk the line. Oh ho 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 ho. I'm filming, Jimmy. Oh, ho ho. Yes. Whoa, look at that. Oh, never mind. That bird was basically like, so you want to push it in the car. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm ready.